Hi, my name is Brandon Graisley. I'm a high school math teacher and we're going to learn how to factor complex trinomials. These are the ones that have something other than a 1 in front of our highest x squared term. See, there's a 4. But sometimes you'll see in an example like this, this one's actually not complex because I could factor out that 3 at the start from every term and end up with a simple trinomial over here, uh, which we, is a lot easier to deal with for most people than this complex type where we can't factor out this common factor. So we're not going to work on this type today. That's from before. Go back and take another look. But this type, where we have a leading coefficient, we call it, that is not 1, uh, this is the kind that we're going to work on today. So let's back up just a little bit, though, and we're going to look at a general case which is going to help us develop a strategy for working on these. This is a little bit complicated, um, but uh, take your time and follow through this. Maybe watch this a couple of times to make sure that you understand why we do this. At the end, we're going to have a nice tidy little procedure that you can go through, but um, this is going to show you why the procedure works, and this will help you to keep it straight in your head, and I promise you, if you understand the why, you'll do better on the how. So let's start off by writing out um, a couple of binomials that are going to give us a complex trinomial. So remember that we have um, something like this, something times x. I'm going to use capital letters, a little bit unusual, but something times x plus something else. These could be negative values also. I'm using capitals because later we're going to use lowercase letters for some important stuff and uh, I don't want you to be confused. So and then we have another binomial, c times a variable plus some other value. So I'm going to use the distributive property um, to expand this, and we've actually done this for uh, binomial expansion enough that I'm just going to go right ahead and write ACX squared. That's, oops, sorry, that's multiplying AC, sorry, AX times CX, and then I'm going to multiply AX times D, so plus AD times x. Now these are just values, right? So a times d is going to be some number. Plus, let's do b times cx, which is going to be bc times x. And last, b times d is bd. Okay, so now let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got two num a number, a times c, another number, ad, bc, and bd. Well, this number at the end here, this one's kind of straightforward. b times d is going to be the value that's at the end, like this one here, of our trinomial. b times d. Whatever b and d are, they will multiply together to give me my constant value, uh, in this case, 3. All right, that one's not too bad. a times c, those are a and c, those are going to multiply together to give me that first coefficient, the complex, the thing that makes this complex, so one of these numbers at least won't be 1. A or C or both will be something other than 1. Okay, now these middle two, these are the interesting ones. So we have a value here, and we have another value here. So we have some number and some other number that when you add them together are going to equal the middle number. So here, AD, some number, plus BC, some other number, together are going to give me that uh, coefficient for my x term, right? AD plus BC, those are the two values that add together, if I was to collect this, to give me my x term. Maybe I'll write that right out here. Okay, so these two numbers here, AD and BC, they're going to add up to 8. Alright, so far we know that this these two things will add up to 8. We know something really interesting as well. If I were to multiply these two numbers, a times d times b times c, well, a times d times b times c, I'm going to rewrite that or reorder that as a, b, c, d. a times b times c times d. Four things multiplied together. I get that right here by multiplying these two numbers together. a, d, and b, c. But now I'm also going to notice that if I were to take the last number and the first number, or rather the, <laughs> the first number and the last number, and do AC times BD, 
those are the same numbers in a different order. I can reorder those to be the same thing. So what that means then is if I take these two values in the middle and multiply them together, I get the same number as if I take the first and last value and multiply them together. And that's the cool trick here is to notice that this always works. These middle two values, when you multiply them, give you the same as multiplying the two values on the end. So, uh, so I'm going to break this number apart, 8, into two separate numbers. They'll add up to 8, but the two numbers will multiply together to give me 12, the same thing as multiplying these two things together. So I'm going to write all that down right now. So the two numbers, so we're looking for, looking for two numbers that do these two things. Number one, they add up to the, I'm going to call it the middle coefficient. That is the, when you sort these out in order, it'll be the one that's in the middle if you have an x squared, an x, and a constant term. So those two numbers are going to add up to the middle coefficient and they will multiply to, let's be careful here, to the product of the first and last coefficients. That is, they multiply to the same thing, same answer that you get when you multiply 4 and 3. Okay, so let me rewrite that specific question, and we'll finish it off down here. 4x squared plus 8x plus 3. So we're not quite done here yet in how to, how to finish with all this. So I want to find a number that, uh, two numbers rather, so two numbers that add or sum to 8, that they add up to 8, and they multiply to the same thing as 3 times 4, which is 12. Two numbers that multiply to give me 12, but add to give me 8. So the usual strategy is to look at 12, this number, and look at its factors and see if we can find something, uh, a pair of factors that will add up to 8. And these are both positive numbers, right? 12 and 8, so that's not too, too bad. So let's see, 12 could be hmm, 1 times 12, could be 2 times 6, 3 times 4, hmm, 4 times 3, 6 times 2. Okay, so we kind of have all of our factors here. Now we got to see, are there any of these that will add up to 8? This is 13, that's 8, and that's 7. Okay, so here we go. We've got a pair, 2 and 6, that are going to add up to the thing that we want. All right, that's pretty good. So let's rewrite our expression, 4x squared plus, instead of 8x, we're going to use these two values, 2x plus 6x. So this is called decomposition. We're decomposing, splitting this value apart into two separate terms. And then, this is why we did our common factoring. This is really important now. We're going to start to common factor here and here. Check this out, this is really cool. I'm going to take what's common to each of these. Well, here I've got a 2 and here I've got a 4. So I can take a 2 out of each. They both have an x as well. This has 2 of them, this has 1. I'm going to take 2x out of each of them. 4x squared divided by 2x is 2x. 2x divided by 2x is 1. So I've common factored the first two terms. Now let's common factor the next two. I've got a 3 in each of them. And that's it. So here, 6x divided by 3 is 2x. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Okay, come on, that's magic. Isn't that magic? Look at this. 2x plus 1 on both sides of that. I can do a little more common factoring here. I'm going to factor out 2x plus 1 from each of these terms. So here I've got 2x plus 1 times 2x plus Three. This is the opposite of using the distributive property. I now have factored my original expression here into two binomials. 
using, okay, it's almost like magic, but you can see here, this is just from realizing the relationships between the values, that you can split this apart into two numbers that add to 8 and multiply to 12, or in general, they add to the middle number and multiply to the same thing that these two numbers multiply to. Okay, time for some practice. Get a bunch of, bin of uh, complex trinomials, I've got a whole bunch in our course, and uh, start decomposing them and uh, check the answers and see how you do. This takes a lot of practice and a lot of time uh, to get good at it, but it's worth doing. Look for two numbers that add up to the middle coefficient and multiply to the same thing that the first and last number multiply to. My name is Brandon Grizzly. I teach high school math and ask some questions.